play music in a band called Lay Baxters. Um, I play uh, analog synth. Um, we're kind of an experimental noise band. I'm always really inspired by old films and books and music and stuff. So it kind of depends on what I'm wearing, uh, watching at the moment. Uh, I saw this great film called The Duke of Burgundy the other day. And so the next night when I went out, I tried to look like a 70s European porn star. I don't know if it worked. But, um. I'd say that I don't really fit into the um, so-called boundaries of any sort of style, I kind of like pick and choose. I do really kind of like the like classic, almost corporate look, but often like kind of tweak that with like a bit of what people might call like street, so often wearing that with like Air Force Ones in like a suit, or I don't really kind of stick to the same thing every day, which I like, kind of provides a little bit of um, spontaneity. I'm pretty relaxed, I have a lot of things from second hand shops. I really believe um, giving clothes a second life. I like to recycle a lot. So if I get sick of something, I take it back to the store. And uh, I think it's just a personal response to fast commercialism as well. Um, and I find one-off pieces and that really gives me great joy. At the moment, my favorite item of clothing is my Karen Walker coat. I had been eyeing it up for a long time, but it was $1,000 and there's no way that you can afford that when you work in a library. So um, luckily, or unluckily, turned out luckily, my boyfriend dumped me. And um, so while he was out of the house, I used his credit card to buy the Karen Walker coat. And I've never regretted it. I did pay him back eventually. My earrings are from uh, this lady who makes um, handmade wooden jewelry. Um, her company is Pandanonium. Her business started from this creative bubble heaven after the earthquake. A lot of people start to make things on a grassroots community base and I think a lot of it is helping, helps people connect, reconnect again um, through this making process. So they, they're kind of uh, a symbol for makers and resilience of the city. And you don't get this feeling anywhere else in the world, only in Christchurch, I think. I'm wearing shoes that I got from Argentina. Um, these are a gift to me from a lady who ran the orphanage where I was working for four or five months last year. And I got my pants and my top from ASOS online. The jacket from a closing down sale. My grandma's Irish and she gave this watch to me like as a present the last time she came to New Zealand and like she died since like, like after she went back so that's kind of like a one way for me to like remember her I suppose. And then same with like the shoes, like it's kind of, I don't know, like a little bit of a reminder of like some of the better things I've done with my life. It's kind of like a kickback to, um, to the times that I enjoyed with those people. Fashion in Christchurch at the moment is um, pretty much what it's always been. Um, I like to say Christchurch is uh, just like the cliche, it's a little bit um, conservative on top but scratch the surface and it's quite dark and dirty underneath. Um, I myself always like to wear nice lingerie. Well Christchurch is a real mixture, it has changed a lot since the earthquake and I would say it's a, it's a mixture between back country mixed with resilient urban living mixed with international style from an influx of people from all over the world. Most people were just stick to like jeans and t-shirts and there's not a huge amount of variation. Like often in the centre city you get people who are a little bit more um, well dressed and more likely to kind of be a little bit more out there. I think possibly since the earthquake people have got bigger problems than what they're going to wear in the mornings. 